Okay, so I'm really excited to be talking to you about this topic tonight. This topic is going to be talking about, we, what are we talking about? We're talking about um, adrenal stress and the relationship between that and sex hormones. So these are for people that are exhausted, burnt out, dealing with hormone imbalances for women, the beginning of the month, the middle of the month, the end of the month, your emotions are down all around um, for, for menopausal women, hot flashes, um, low libido, no sex drive, no motivation, no get up and go. Your get up and go has gone up and went. Um, for men, maybe you have no, um, no testosterone, very low. Uh, you may be taking um, testosterone uh, replacements and you're having to take uh, aromatase inhibitors and you're very emotional, you have extra estrogen, maybe you have some man boobs as they call it, um, you get very emotional, you're irritable, you're cranky, and, and for both of you guys, women and men, it's from a long-term stress response, right? You've been uh, managing a lot of different uh, demands and, and putting out a lot of different fires and really burning both ends of the candles, all these cliches. And ultimately, the stress has impacted you to the point where your hormones suck and you're not able to lose the weight that you want. Uh, maybe you're not able to put on the weight that you want. Your body composition is changing. You're not able to put on muscle. You go to the gym. You don't have that motivation to continue. Um, even when you do, you get exhausted and you're crashing out for the next couple of days. And life sucks, right? My name is Dr. Joel Rosen. I am the Adrenal Fatigue Recovery Ninja. And today I want to talk to you about the relationship between the adrenal health and the sex hormones. So what is the commonality? Well, the commonality, like everything we've talked about so far is stress, right? The stress response. Um, the brain interprets the environment, um, physical, emotional, chemical, environmental, uh, psychosocial, all of those things are going to impact the way that your brain is signaling to the rest of the body. And you have a sex steroid hormone pathway that gets signaled by the pituitary um, after it's been signaled by the hypothalamus. And, and then you have um, neurochemicals um, or you have um, neurotransmitters that don't have to necessarily go to the pituitary. They can go straight to the organs and they can produce neuro, neurochemicals. And those are things like adrenaline. Those are things like um, dopamine and serotonin and GABA. And these are our fight or flight hormones. So these are stress neurotransmitters. So getting that motivation to fee, f flee or, or, or um, fight. And um, that's survival stuff. Um, but once that dissipates, then the slowered response of the pituitary tells the adrenals to make a stress hormone um, to get your body to pre prepare itself for um, the impending stressor. Um, and then that should be turned off, right? At the end of the day, that shouldn't be running from a lion all the time. Um, but you have these micro stressors every day from you're looking on the computer to your EMFs, to your Wi-Fi, to your fluorescent bulbs, um, to sitting down all day, to having five different windows open, um, to be eating crappy foods, not getting a lot of nutritional um, utilization of your foods. And then ultimately what happens done repetitively over and over and over and over again, breaks down your feedback loops. And, and then you go to the doctor, and I've said this before, and you do an ACTH stimulation test and your pituitary um, is, is being substituted by um, the ACTH that you get in your test and your adrenals respond. And there's two faults with that. Number one, who says you're making ACTH in the first place? Um, number two, um, even though the adrenals may respond, that doesn't tell me about the feedback loops. That doesn't tell me about the quality of the hormone. That doesn't tell me if it's active or it's inactive. It doesn't tell me about the microbiome. It doesn't tell me how it's breaking down. It doesn't tell me how it's getting inside the cell and eliciting an effect. You know, it just doesn't do that. Um, but what's the relationship over time with the adrenal stress and the sex hormones? What happens is you have a greater representation of, of cells in the adrenals and cells in your gonads and cells in your sex repair tissues or your, or your, your uh, ovaries um, that will ultimately start to compensate for that chronic stress response at the expense of 
either low estrogen, low progesterone, low testosterone, um, low DHEA, and, and even over time, low cortisol, because you're just depleting and draining the banks. Now, it may not be low enough that you see it on a test um, for it to be considered an insufficiency to, for it to can be considered a autoimmunity. Um, but the problem with that is if it's not low enough, um, you're thrown out with the bathwater and told you're crazy that there's nothing wrong with you. And even though there is something wrong with you, the good news is your glands are still producing the sex hormones, albeit at a low amount, um, or, but, or your steroid hormones, or your cortisol, your glucocorticoids, it's still secreting that. Um, but the problem is, is that you're very low on it and you're ignoring all the other pathologies that are happening like utilization of the active hormone deactivating the hormone not converting it to an active form not breaking it down and it accumulates in the body and now all of a sudden you have hormone resistance so what happens well you have low hormone function you don't have a lot of spunk you don't have a lot of libido you don't have a lot of drive you don't have um, a lot of vigor um, you don't have to get up and go, like we said. So what do you do? You go to the doctor and you go on bioidentical hormones, right? And that's what happens. And in the beginning, you may feel a little bit better because now you're bringing fresh blood, if you will, to the party. But over time, you didn't fix the problems in the first place that caused the need for the hormone replacement. And ultimately, you're going to be yelling at a deaf person louder, which I tell people, meaning you have hormone resistance, like insulin resistance. Um, when you have a lot of glucose that's being consumed or you have a lot of inflammation and your pancreas is having to make a lot of insulin and your cells are starting to get resistance to the messages that insulin keeps bombarding them with, it's down-regulating receptor sites for the for the messages to be listened to and heard. And now all of a sudden you have insulin resistance. Well, why can't you have estrogen resistance? Why can't you have testosterone resistance? Why can't you have progesterone resistance or DHEA resistance or thyroid resistance? You can, and you do. And what happens is, well, let's just go on a higher dose, right? Let's just keep going on a higher dose. Ask any insulin-based patient, do you have to go higher with your dose? Ask a thyroid-based patient, do you have to go higher with your dose? Ask a hormone-based patient, are you going higher with your dose? Yes, I am going higher with my dose. What do I do? Well, you gotta fix the problem in the first place. You gotta fix that stress response in the first place. And that's not happening. You're not getting the proper tests. You're not looking at the functional ranges. Um, you're not being looked at as a complete individual and you're looking, you're being looked at as a, um, as a, as a specialty, right? Like the specialist, the orthopedic doesn't really talk to the neurologist, doesn't really talk to the endocrinologist or the rheumatologist or the gastroenterologist. They do their own things. That's not part of what I do, but really it is part of what you do because it's the body, right? <laughs> it's the body. So anyways, so what do we do? Well, number one, you got to get proper testing. I've always said it. Um, it starts with the proper genetic test because the genetic test, um, you have a tendency to be certain types of um, systems in the body. You can have a weakened immune system. You can have a over toxic system, an overstimulated system, an understimulated system. You can have a histamine based system. You can have a um, a weak immune system, you can have a low cellular system. These will be things that we'll be talking about with your genetic type with Dr. John Thomas and I, but suffice it to say you have more tendencies based on your genetic susceptibilities that when you have environmental stressors, it's going to break the chain in one of those susceptibilities. So you're always getting sick. Your hormones are always imbalanced. You have histamine intolerances. You have allergies all the time. You're always overstimulated and ADD-ish, or you're always understimulated and depressed and low energy. And you're, you know, these are the things that happen. So you need a proper genetic test, number one. Number two, ideally you need a, um, a, a multi-purpose test for your hormones. So looking at blood, I love blood, but I don't only love blood. Looking at urine, I love urine, but I don't, don't only love urine. Looking at saliva, each one of those have different impactors to give us insights on what's going on. Looking at your functional ranges, complete blood counts, not just TSH and T4. I mean, you wanna look at reverse T3 and T3 and the ratios. And then you wanna look at the relationship between that and ferritin and homocysteine and uric acid 
and ammonia and, and a lot of things that can really impact your immune system like viruses and how many of you guys are doing that you're not you're just not doing it um, and then you also want to make sure that you look at your your life you look at your stressors and and you address it one by one and you prioritize it so um, this is a quickie I wanted to just tell you a little bit about how the hormones are impacted by the same things that impact your stressors, um, which ultimately cause a hormone resistance by getting too much hormone replacement. And then you start wondering why it's not working anymore because you didn't fix the problem in the first place and your doctor's not looking at, at it in that capacity. And really it takes time and you have to study it really hard. You have to understand the genetic component it goes much deeper than just MTHFR and COMT. You're not just gonna take methylfolate and expect it to fix things. A lot of the times it makes you more anxious, it makes you more stress, um, you, you don't do well with it. And that's because it's producing too much glutamate and excitation. So that's a whole other story. We'll talk about that another time. Um, so what do I do? Well, I do all of that. I sit down with you and I discuss where is it that you are now and where is it that you wanna go and why aren't you getting there? And if I feel I can help you, I'll tell you exactly what you need to do. Um, you gotta to go to the truthaboutadrenalfatigue.com forward slash apply, the truthaboutadrenalfatigue.com forward slash apply, and you'll be guided to take a 45 minute um, consult with me, no charge. Um, but the only thing that I ask is you be serious you be decisive. You'd be like, yeah, I want to fix this. I'm going to do whatever it takes to fix this. Um, you be coachable and be willing to do the work because it's not going to be easy. I mean, it takes time, takes energy, takes focus, takes dedication, takes desirability. Like I don't want to live my life this way anymore. And resourcefulness, doing whatever it takes to do it. Those are who I'm looking for. I'm not here to convince you about what's right or what's wrong. I'm just looking for those people that are ready to take it to the next level, get their life back. So that sounds like you sign up for my truth about adrenal fatigue um, forward slash apply. And I look forward to ending your adrenal fatigue nightmare. If you guys have any questions, I'm doing this through Facebook live, so I can't see it when I'm doing it through zoom, put your questions in the question box and I will be sure to answer each and every one of them. Once again, if you're watching this through YouTube, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Make sure you go check out my Facebook page at Dr. Joel Rosen's Truth About Adrenal Fatigue um, or Adrenal Fatigue, the, the Art of Eat Adrenal Fatigue Recovery. I think that's what it's called. Um, and make sure you check out my uh, website at thetruthaboutadrenalfatigue.com. Hope you have a wonderful evening.